Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how you doing today, man? I'm awesome, Sauce Nathan. How are you today? Oh man, I am sweatier than a gorilla's balls in the jungle in the middle of July because that's what it is right now as we record this episode. Hot ass balls. Yeah, but other than that, doing pretty good. <laughs> That'll be an interesting intro. Somebody's gonna be, somebody's gonna have someone else in their car and go, Jesus Christ, what the hell was that? Everybody knows that this podcast is not safe for work or listening in car rides with <laughs> other people around. Mm-hmm. Yep. We need to legit have a parental advisory sticker on the podcast. Mm, like on the cover art? Yep. That would be dope. So what do we got on the agenda for today? Well, we're going to be talking about happiness. Here's a question that I posed to Facebook a couple of days ago. By the time you monkeys are hearing this, it will have been several weeks ago. But I, I asked this question, what makes you happy? And I got, I don't know, dozens of, of in, for the most part, really good responses, really good answers. Um, some I agreed with and some I didn't. And this has been a topic on my mind lately. Um, and it's, it's one of the things that I talk with my, my mentorship clients about on a regular basis. That pile of money ain't going to make you happy. That accolades that you got about being on that stage or doing that podcast or having so-and-so as a client is not going to make you happy. It might for a few minutes, but that kind of happiness turns into like a drug habit, right? There's the high from it and then the low from it, right? Um, And my stance on what causes happiness at least in my experience, has been different than what a lot of other people in this space talk about. So I thought, hell, let's just talk about that today. Okay, so I'm going to push back just a little bit. First of all, I do agree with you. Um, I People that don't know, when we were kids, when when I was like 18, 19 years old, I started my own record label. And as part of that meant we had to get on stage and perform. And the rush from that was so awesome that it led into other things, but it was like a dopamine addiction. It was like, Oh, I can't wait until the next time we get to get on stage. I can't now it's, I can't wait until the next time I get to get on the podcast with Landon. So there is the up and down kind of roller coaster of that. Um, money though. I used to have a really negative outlook of money and I used to be one of those money doesn't make you happy people, but I have to be honest um, next week. I'm taking Bella up to Estes Park. We're going to stay the weekend at the Stanley Hotel. That is going to be a huge chunk of change that's going to be pulled out of my pocket, but I don't even really have to worry about it. So the money itself doesn't make me happy, but the experiences that I'm able to um, buy and not have to sweat does make me immensely happy. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. And I'm going to push back a little bit so we can clarify this. The money itself doesn't make you happy. The experience does. That's fantastic. You know what's rad though? Is that you could take her to a place that didn't cost you an arm and a leg and still have an amazing experience. Now, let me, let me make myself really, really clear. Money doesn't buy happiness, but it is whatever comes after that is such a distant second that it kind of does. Here's the problem. There's a lot of people that are doing a thing that they don't really like doing with people. They don't really like doing it with for the sake of getting the money. And what that eventually causes is resentment towards the thing and the people that they're doing it with. And most of us will self-sabotage and burn that thing to the ground all in the pursuit of money for the wrong reasons through the wrong channel. And that's really more of what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not talking about figure out your passion and chase that. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is, is what actually causes happiness. And if you can align what causes happiness along with how you generate revenue, it's really fucking easy to get clients. So (laughs) we're going to have this pushback back and forth. I've actually been in the position where I've had jobs that I loved doing. And like you said, because I'm doing it to get money, I eventually ended up hating 
something that I was passionate about. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, I did that with learning how to, how to cook, how to be a chef, right? Doing it for a paycheck took all of the juice out of it. Um, and it ruined it for me so much so that about two years ago, I just up and quit cooking. I've been cooking a little bit more recently, but I did like take a serious major break from it because I just didn't want to fucking do it. Um, but that doesn't mean that if you do the thing that you love doing for a paycheck, that this will automatically happen to you. It's actually quite the reverse if you're doing it with the right people. Ah, there we go. So let's just dive right into this. My whole take on happiness is the ability to spend your day, your time doing what it is that you want because you want to is what causes happiness. And let's break that down a minute. Money is replenishable right? If your fucking house burns down, you can live somewhere else. If your car gets totaled, you can get it replaced, right? If you are in a relationship with somebody that you love madly and they end up with your best friend, you can replace that person, right? But go spend that weekend with Bella and that time spent There's a lot of people that are listening to this that instead of going and spending that time with somebody that they enjoy being around without being tied to doing something they don't like doing, they're fucking in chore mode all weekend long doing shit that they don't like and they ain't happy. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. So how do, let's kind of dive into that. How do we get to the point where we're happy doing the thing that we do and getting the results from it that we get, because I can't really distinguish. Well, I mean, like I love doing what I do. And since coming into your world, it's made, it's made my work uh, that much more enjoyable, but I can't really distinguish what, why, and I can't really distinguish what has changed. Yep. So there's a, there's a couple of caveats in here. One is you got to like the thing that you're doing, right? If, if you're, if you own a cleaning company and you hate cleaning, it doesn't matter who hires you to go do the cleaning. You're going to hate doing the doing right. But if you enjoy what it is that you do, or you enjoy the line of work that you're in and you can get in a position where you only do the parts of it that you like doing, there's only a couple of things that really stand in your way. Not being able to make ends meet, right? If, if you're not able to do that, it doesn't matter how much you love doing the thing, you're going to eventually have to go do something else. The other piece is the people that are in your way, right? If, if you run a business to where you rely on other people to help deliver something to and or for the clients and they can't get their shit together, they're going to ruin it for you, Right? If you love doing your thing, in your case, writing sales copy, but you don't really like the people that you're doing it with and or for, eventually you're going to lose your mind with it, right? So to answer your question, it comes down to this. If you like doing what you're doing and you've got plenty because you're working with people that will pay well and you've chosen people that will pay well who are really fucking cool to work with and they stay out of your way, You get to spend your day writing sales copy for people that you dig and you're getting paid enough that you've got extra to take Bella on weekend stuff. That's happy. Right? So how do we do this? Well, first you got to ask yourself if you actually like doing the doing that you're doing. And it's simple. Just be honest with yourself. If you didn't ever get paid again and you had to go get a 40 hour work, 40 hour work week job to support yourself, would you spend your free time doing the thing that you're doing? If you're honest with yourself, a lot of people listening to this would say, fuck no. Right? Because a lot of people are, oh, I've got this skill set and I'm going to monetize it. Cool. To an extent. But if you can honestly say, yes, I would still do the doing, awesome. Find the right kind of people that have the resources that you can impact big time. And now it's like playing all day long. So I totally feel that because especially when you say, would you do this if you weren't getting paid? 
I love writing. I it's I mean, and I love persuasion and writing and persuasion mixed together. It's it's my uh, happy dance place. Um, but what if people are like, no, I'm just good at this, and it, it's in, it's in my genius zone, I guess. But to be honest, if I didn't get paid for it, I would not do this. Well, if you're chasing the dollar and you can actually make good dollars doing the thing that you're doing and you're not looking for this to provide happiness, then have at it. There's a lot of, and I say this and I've been saying this more often lately, I don't have the only way, I don't have the only right way and my way is not the right way for everybody. If we're talking about happiness, what causes happiness? It ain't your girlfriend. It ain't your husband. It ain't the house. It's not the money. It's not the plane. It's not any of that shit. It's spending your time day in and day out doing what it is that you enjoy doing. So pick one. I mean, either you're chasing the money or you're chasing the happiness. Don't confuse the two. It's totally okay to chase the money and find your happiness elsewhere, right? Use the thing that you're doing now as a stepping stone. That's totally okay. But be clear about that. And then understand that that thing's not what's supposed to provide you happiness. Okay, so before we're out of here, I'm going to do something that I probably shouldn't do since I'm beholden to your money. Um, But I'm going to flip this around on you. I know that when we've talked about this in the past, you said that you got dragged into the sales gorilla thing, kicking and screaming. Do you enjoy doing what you do with Sales Gorilla? Ooh, I saw that one coming too, but not until you got into it. Um, Aspects of it, yes. This thing that I'm doing as a whole does not cause me happiness. But I know that and I understand what it's for. However, because what I teach is how to figure out how to spend your time doing what it is that you want to do, I'm getting closer and closer to that every day and every week. What I love doing is I love talking to really cool people and watching the light bulb go off and then have them take action on that thing and then fucking amazing shit happens in their world. And I've put myself in a position to be able to do that. So in many instances in this business, yes. In the grand scheme of things, doing this thing, no. That's why I got dragged kicking and screaming into it. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Cause I know, especially from behind the scenes, being in your kind of inner circle world, I've seen the results that you get for people on the one-on-one basis. You, I've, I've seen them in my own life and I see the sparkle in your eye when people come to you and they're like, dude, I did that thing that you said, and I got this awesome result from it. And I can't believe that it was so easy. And I see this gleam in your eye that I think is probably more valuable than the money that you get from the people that pay you to help them out. Yeah, and and probably here's something that a lot of people don't know about me and probably wouldn't guess. I'm not as interested in money as I am in that. Like literally, if I take all the personality tests, I have a little bit more altruistic sensibility to what makes me tick than the money thing, which drives some of the people in my world crazy, let me tell you. But I've chased the money, right? And having money and having, having the shit that you can buy with money is amazing. Don't get me wrong. Believe me. I spend a bunch of it. But <laughs> I'm more interested in the, oh, my God, holy shit balls. And here's, here's one last little thing, and then I'm going to kick you off here to, for today. About 70% of the people that come into my world that have actual interaction with me, about 70% of them within about six to 18 months end up doing something different than what they were doing when they came to me. 70%. That's a huge amount. Why? I sell happiness. That's crazy. But I see it happen. So I know, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, we kind of went all over the place on today's episode. I appreciate the conversation though. And I appreciate the authenticity. And if people want to check out more of this podcast, if they enjoyed this episode, where can they go to get more of their sales gorilla fix? Sales gorilla podcast.com bitches. All right. All right. Thanks Landon. Until next time, man, I'll catch you later. Peace out Cub Scouts. Hey, I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you. I shake my head at.